after Brexit, Britain wants to remain a good friend and neighbour to Europe. Yet I know there are some voices calling for a punitive deal that punishes Britain and discourages other countries from taking the same path. And while I am confident that this scenario need never arise, while I am sure a positive agreement can be reached, I am equally clear that no deal for Britain is better than a bad deal for Britain. Eight months after the start of the Brexit divorce talks, Theresa May is coming to Brussels today. Over lunch she will discuss the last details, not of the Brexit end deal, but an intermediate deal on sufficient progress. Is there going to be a deal? Well, at the moment there is no deal. There is no agreement. Nothing today? No prospect today? No, I, I, I am... Uh... No, I'm optimistic that it is possible, 50-50, uh, to have something. But we have to be sure uh, that uh, on citizens' rights, everything is, uh, is, uh, is OK. Yes, yeah. it seems that there is a deal on the money. Uh, Are you happy with that? On the island. You know, that was uh, always the, the request of the European Union, that it's not a question of a punishment, it's also not a question of, of, a, of, a, of whatever uh, bill to be paid. It's normal that when you go out of an organisation, yeah, you can Honor your obligations. It's like in a divorce. Nobody can leave his wife and say, oh, the money is for you. Well, the island, Mr. Hofstad. Giver Hofstad is the Brexit coordinator of the European Parliament and leads the Parliament's Brexit steering group. The EU is fairly confident that there is a deal. But then Verhofstadt's chief of staff gets news from the assistant of Michel Barnier, the EU chief negotiator. There's no deal. So what? No deal. Really no deal. Georg says there's no deal. Yeah. No deal. That's what Georg says. No deal. Cette histoire de déclaration a foutu May en colère et elle a dit tant pis pour les citoyens Union européenne. Men of the European Union. Men of the European Union. We chose to leave the European Union. We chose to stay out of the European Union. No deal. There's no deal. There's no deal. This time it's not Norwegian humor. He doesn't know the details, Georg. He's just passing on the message. It's not clear. More phone calls follow and a possible explanation emerges. One of the Brexit steering group members leaked information in a TV interview. And Arlene Foster of the DUP, May's small but crucial coalition partner, didn't like what she heard about the Irish border. Mr Lambert is to blame. You must be joking. What an idiot. I mean, it's pretty clear you don't come out and say everything which happened in one of these fucking meetings. They show you the more documents and expressions which are going to be discussed an hour later at the fucking lunch yeah. when the Prime Minister go out and say, oh, it says all of this. Bon, elle a visiblement pas discuté avec Arlene Foster avant de débarquer à, à Bruxelles, là, sur son texte. Hein. Ça, c'est... Ça, c'est clair, hein. But, the, but, the, but the, that she got onto a plane to Brussels without having cleared it was the DUP. Exactly. I mean, what the fuck is wrong with her? That's the point. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> you know, she's, uh, she's at this meeting. So um, the first question to me is, so what does Arlene Foster think about it? Oh, I don't know. I haven't spoken to her. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I mean it's ridiculous. Oh, Arlene's calling. She oh, just seen oh yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that one. <laughs> Pathetic. Pathetic. Ah. Uh, Allô, je vais vous mettre sur le haut-parleur parce que j'ai Eva et Nick euh, qui sont ici. Donc, euh, les deux à l'appareil, Davis d'abord et puis Hugh, donc, euh, euh, Davis a dit oui, euh, enfin, euh, dans l'affaire irlandaise, euh, apparemment, il était d'accord avec le texte. Ils ont téléphoné en face parce que Foster a fait une déclaration. Oui, je euh, sais. Euh, et, et la déclaration, l'intérieurement, a été venue euh, comme. Euh, une surprise à l'intérieur de la réunion et ils 
ont téléphoné, ma papa est revenu en disant voilà, on a besoin de plus de temps. Donc il ne s'attendait pas à ce que la Aurélie Force te fasse tout, qu'elle qu 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 peut fasse péter. Et c'est pas un jeu, et c'est pas un jeu de, de la Mei qui fait semblant de batailler à Bruxelles et tout ça. C'est peu probable parce qu'elle n'est pas très très douée à ce genre d'exercice, la Mei. Can you imagine you are prime minister of the United Kingdom, the great of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and the sickness in Brussels to negotiate for your country a deal. The deal is nearly ready, and in the middle of that meeting, yeah. you get a phone call from your coalition partner yes. that they have taken energy away from you. Yeah. It must have been a very, very painful situation for our person. A terrible situation. You mm -hmm. can only feel sorry for her. The next morning, the team of EU chief negotiator Michel Barnier comes over to discuss the situation. Secret, non, mais vraiment, c'est hier qu'on s'est vu. Ça va? Et on se disait, ça va bien, tout va bien. On se dit, là, c'est fini, on va pouvoir arrêter ces conneries bientôt. The good mood doesn't last long because the Barnier team is terrified of more leaks and of Verhofstadt causing trouble over the issue of citizens' rights. Vous comprenez qu'on est sur le fil du rasoir. En ça. réalité, c'est inacceptable pour ce qui est écrit là. Voilà. Qui Richard. 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 Oh, ouais, 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 ouais. Je comprends. Long days follow, with phone calls and more phone calls. Everyone just waits for Theresa May to return to Brussels, or not to return. Eventually, May does come back, very early in the morning, after changes were made to the solution for the Irish border. An extra paragraph was added to what from now on will be called the Irish border backstop. It will haunt the negotiations until the very end. You're watching cartoons. So the only thing we I spent all yesterday from 5 until 9.30 on the phone, yesterday evening, the whole fucking time. No, the maid was coming and she wasn't coming and she wasn't coming and she wasn't coming and she wasn't coming. Coming, coming. Okay, so listen, what's the story of Ireland? Dans le 49, on dit pas de hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. And dans le 49, on dit pas de hard border between the UK and Northern Ireland. Oui, yeah. mais on a relu ça. Donc, il y a une... C'est pas incompatible. A year and a half after the Brexit referendum and seven months after the talks began, the EU negotiators believe they have reached the first deal. But a couple of days later, Theresa May questions the financial settlement. She says in a letter to her Tory party members that nothing is agreed until everything is signed. And David Davis, her Brexit secretary, casts doubt on the Irish border deal. They have switched back from negotiating with the EU to talking to their own troops. Is we want to protect the peace process and we also want to protect uh, Ireland from the impact of, uh, of, of Brexit for them. 
So we were, you know, this was a statement of intent more than anything else. It was much more a statement so, of intent than it was okay. a legally enforceable thing. Yeah. Much more a state, an statement of intent than a legally enforceable mm. thing. The statement of David Davis blows up so much that he is forced to call Verhofstadt to explain himself. You got this on tape. One little coffee, one Havana for the president. And who says we don't care? Huh? He's gone into the loo. David Davis is due to call. Well, you can with his phone. He took his phone. Then we can't listen if he's in the toilet. Is so, this David? No, this yeah, is not him. Four, 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 must be four, four, plus four, four. Hello? Hello, yes. David, yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but you cannot say a statement of intent of a text on even on Britain on, on the Irish issue. Why you don't use the word commitment? <laughs> it's a commitment from our side. Yeah. You, you you have to know that. The use of your words for the whole European press for two, three days now. <laughs> no, really, really, really. People like Davis destroy uh, the trust we have found now in the administration. Mm -hmm. You want to mention him by name? Yeah. Good. It's a you, you know, political party reacted to a political thing. If you are not diplomats who are saying that, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you could not have been a diplomat. No, never. But we are not our attacking May. We are a sure deserve, but at the end, we know the truth. Too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. May have said such a thing too. Yeah, but not exactly the same. No, no, she said something on the monk. Uh, we only pay if we have a good agreement. Yeah, that she said. That she said. Very but okay, we have a better victim for the moment. Uh, The year ends and a new year starts with a skit course. Guy Verhofstadt is preparing for an off-road rally in the spring, but maybe also for the Brexit negotiations that are about to enter a new phase. After the deal on the three divorce issues, talks will now start on how the EU and the UK see their future relationship. The team of Barnier has prepared slides with options for the future relationship, depending on how closely the UK wants to remain tied to the EU. Et en fonction de cette règle, des portes qu'ils ouvrent ou qu'ils ferment. Et je trouve très important d'expliquer à l'extérieur que c'est eux qui ouvrent les portes et qui ferment les portes, c'est pas nous. J'ai beaucoup expliqué, y compris au chef d'État de gouvernement, par cette salle qui a pas mal de succès. Hein. Je vais des salles. Ils deviennent de plus en plus, euh, plus, de, plus en plus de couleurs. Oui, oui, comme ça, nous allons être des gars. Okay, merci beaucoup. Merci. Michel Barnier is a bit of a teacher. But when Verhofstadt asks his team to make a slide of their own, to show at a meeting that Barnier will also attend, it proves to be not so easy. But where does that lead to that, Arab? It makes me want more. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's somewhere else. Web. <laughs> it takes you somewhere else, Adele. I have a feeling that the reaction that Mr. Rochet just made to that slide is that he's not going to use it. Um, yeah. If you want to know. That's the, why I'm going to stop here. Do you <laughs> want to know the fullness of my pensée, knowing the man just a touch? Yeah. 
and he's in competition yeah. with Bruce Bram. He's in direct head on competition with Barnier. Who is the, yeah. the, who is the, the dark bollocks of PowerPoint, PowerPoint fucking king. Yeah, yeah he is. He'd be like. Well, at least if he decides to use it, it's not a complete. Yeah, we can't. We don't have to hide our heads in shame forever. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I announced to Barney that we would have a slide. Oh, but you didn't. You've great anticipation. Oh, yeah. no, that's the I worst thing. What you could have done. This is the worst. Yeah, this is the worst thing. <laughs> Crazy bad idea. Yeah, it's a bit stupid. I really recognise this, but I didn't realise it was going to be quite so challenging. <laughs> In the end, Verhofstadt doesn't use the slide that Bram made. Barnier retains his title as PowerPoint King. Working for Verhofstadt can be exhausting. In March, Verhofstadt travels to London for meetings with the UK Brexit Secretary David Davis and Prime Minister Theresa May. So we have a light start. David Davis. <laughs> he's a bit. I wonder, do you think he still does Brexit? Oh, he's not in Brussels this week, though, is he? <coughs> no, he's still asking, why are you here? He's going to have a cabinet meeting this morning at 9.30. Oh, we can answer it. <laughs> and, uh, um, do you have problems here? <laughs> do you want some help? <laughs> do you need some help? Giverhofstadt came to find out for himself what kind of future relationship the UK government wants with the EU. But Downing Street does not allow the meetings to be filmed. And good. That's good. Okay. Wow. So you're happy with the meetings? Well, this went well. So on the concept, yep. uh, we uh, yep. put yep. it in in. A... <laughs> On the concept? On the concept, yeah. My point is always that this cannot uh, be uh, successful if there is, first of all, not a frame. concept mm -hmm. and, 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 and an architecture of this mm -hmm. relationship. And, that in, and, and then you fill it in. Mm -hmm. While now, from their side, yeah, we want this and this and this and this and this and this. Blah, 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 blah. And we explain that, in fact, that the, the, the consequence is that everybody sees it as sherry picking. The UK needs to make a choice. To do so, Theresa May gathers her ministers at her official country residence called Chequers. From there, she wants to publish a white paper with the British plans for the future relationship between the EU and the UK. The disagreements in her cabinet are huge. OK, I mean, let's start this yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, you could also say, on Brexit, we're expecting the white paper of uh, uh, the British government on the 7th of July, if, if there is still ministers, uh, if they have not killed each other in Czechos. So, uh, yeah, but that's, that's harsh, eh? You know, saying that they are fighting with each other. Well, you can do that with a joke, you know? With a joke. Yeah, it's so true. It's also true, eh? And on top it's true. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> a joke that is true. <laughs> okay, dear colleagues, uh, uh, apologize for the uh, small delay. Je ne sais pas encore quel sera le contenu de ce livre blanc, c'est tout l'objet du débat interne au sein du, du, du cabinet de guerre, enfin du, du cabinet de Madame May, euh, où il y a beaucoup de tendances qui s'affrontent. Euh, mais ce que nous savons, c'est qu'il y a deux grandes options. La première option est celle de David Davis. Moi, je l'ai vu lundi dernier, juste pour une heure, c'était la première fois que je le voyais depuis trois mois. Euh, euh, Peut-être. Euh, Il dit ça. En tout cas, la première option, elle consiste à créer une sorte de midi-union entre l'Union européenne, les Européens, et euh, le Royaume-Uni, comme sur un pied d'égalité. 
Si nous sommes sur un pied d'égalité, dès qu'on voudra modifier quelque chose chez nous, on devra leur demander la permission. La, la deuxième option, c'est celle de Theresa May, euh, telle que je la ressens dans les négociations avec ses collaborateurs, et ce qu'elle vise, qui consiste à mettre en place, euh, finalement, le marché unique seulement pour les biens. Je pense que cette option est dangereuse euh, et qu'elle est frontalement contraire au principe de l'intégrité du marché intérieur et de l'indivisibilité des quatre libertés. D'accord. Merci. Merci. The negotiations have become a standoff. At stake are the very foundations of the EU. Theresa May negotiates as if there are no founding principles. The EU explains again and again that their principles cannot be flouted. You're perfectly happy for the UK to have full access to single market uh, without freedom of people. No, no. So everybody in the continent ex uh, 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 understands that when you're talking about the single market, that it cannot only be the freedom of movement of goods or services of capital, but that it needs to also be the freedom of movement of people. Because there are some uh, countries in a single market who are specialized in goods. So they have an advantage of the single market with their goods. Some countries are specialized in services. I think that we are here in the center, uh, in the capital of a country uh, that is uh, specialized, that has a huge advantage in services. Like other countries, yeah, have uh, uh, an advantage uh, as country in the single market because of their workforce. And if you want to take out one of these uh, 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 elements, you destroy, in fact, uh, the concept itself of the single market. In the end, the Chequers debate over which plan to choose for the future relationship is won by Theresa May. But her win comes at a cost. Two of her most important ministers resign, David Davis, the Brexit negotiator, and Boris Johnson, the Foreign Secretary. The EU doesn't like May's Chequers plan either but the negotiators decide not to criticize it too openly. The UK has asked everyone to say, please don't shoot this down. Um, and as I said, we shouldn't. But at the same time, we should also make it clear in private contacts with the UK, and we all have contacts with them. We should say, we are ready to give this a shot, but be aware, this is the starting point of the, of the serious negotiation and not the end point. At the same time, we should also recognize that they have moved. Uh, in certain areas. I think until Chequers, they were there in terms of requiring all benefits of membership to be preserved, and they were here in terms of the obligations they were ready to accept. I think now we are there. The question is, what do we do with the remaining gap? Another summer starts, the summer of 2018. Britain now has less than eight months left before leaving the EU, with or without a deal. Guy Verhofstadt takes time off to pursue his passion and goes racing.
The summer doesn't bring any relief for the negotiations. On the contrary, a new Brexit secretary has replaced David Davis, but his first encounters with Barnier are difficult. We are now with the new British Britannique, Dominic Raab, in a more regular process. It's not very difficult. In seven months, the UK will leave the EU, and the risk is growing that they will do so without a deal. The Irish border has become the core problem. The EU negotiators find nothing in May's Chequers plan that might resolve it in a way that they find acceptable. But it's the only plan on the table. They feel trapped and wonder if they made a tactical mistake. It doesn't go well. Huh? We didn't react very fiercely to Chequers, but maybe it should have been better from day one to say, hey, and the Chequers plan has no majority in Britain. Where the hard Brexiteers are against, because uh, the yeah. EVs, and also and there is a pro European and, so against. and the pro European yeah. not against. Yeah. So the, it's really and, and 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 for tactical reasons, uh, the whole Labour is against. So, so everybody's against. Uh, everybody it's, it's, it's against. a great fiction. A fiction. Uh, but uh, still, uh, according to the baseline strategy of us, that's where we are putting our fictions. This fiction uh, will prevail because at the end nobody wants to get rid of the Prime Minister as not, not the power. The Brexit is at the end with the blood on their thing will have to vote for this and we will buy it uh, pretending that we agree but we disagree and everything is just big theatre to make them yeah. accept this bloody Brexit. Yeah. So that's the scenario we are putting yeah, that's our the Tensions explode when Theresa May goes to present her Chequers plan to the European Council in Salzburg. The 27 EU heads of state and government give her a cold reception. And Donald Tusk, the EU president, adds insult to injury with an Instagram. It shows Theresa May at the dessert buffet, with Tusk saying, a piece of cake perhaps. Sorry, no cherries. I have treated the EU with nothing but respect. The UK expects the same. A good relationship at the end of this process depends on it. At this late stage in the negotiations, it is not acceptable to simply reject the other side's proposals without a detailed explanation 
and counter proposals. Une réponse négative, ça n'a aucune explication, s'agissant de la future relation. Ce n'est pas vrai. Ce n'est pas vrai. De manière très, très précise et très régulière, depuis la publication des Checkers, nous avons dit qu'il y avait un problème clair du Tchérébéki. On the public stage of the political theatre that is now open war between Europe and London. Theresa May is pushed hard by the Brexiteers in her Tory party to make a strong stand against the bullies from Brussels. Thank you, thank you very much for that warm welcome. No one wants a good deal more than me. Uh -huh. But that has never meant getting a deal at any cost. Britain isn't afraid to leave with no deal. Oh, fuck off. But we need... It's to the crowd. Yeah. It would be tough at first, but the resilience and ingenuity of the British people would see us through. A war spirit. Yes. Some people ask me to rule out no deal. But if I did that, I would weaken our negotiating position and have to agree to whatever the EU offers. Hello, 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 there are plenty of titles which is yeah, nice. really instead of a written uh, statement, uh, uh, something like that would be more <laughs> sexy. Ma conviction depuis le début de cette négociation, c'est que le risque économique et le risque politique lié à un audit pour le Royaume-Uni est, est si considérable. Elle le sait, et toutes ses équipes le savent. Le no deal, elle sait très bien ce que ça veut dire politiquement pour elle. Et pour l'économie britannique, et tout, tout, tout le business qui s'est mis en, un peu en opposition, en révolte. Michel Barnier keeps believing that eventually there will be a deal, because no deal would be disastrous for the UK. He goes back to the negotiation table, while Guy Verhofstadt travels to Umbria to inspect the grapes at his Umbrian villa. Back in Brussels, Michel Barnier is struggling once again with the Irish border backstop. Everybody wants the border between Northern Ireland, part of the UK, and the Irish Republic, part of the EU, to stay open. It's a guarantee for peace on the Irish island. But if the border stays open, goods could enter the EU which might not meet European standards. For the UK that would be fine, but for the EU a disaster. In the end, Barnier and the British negotiators reach a compromise. But when May sends her Brexit minister Raab to Brussels for the final details, the unexpected happens again. They, they came uh, to, to, to Brussels uh, with, with, with Raab and uh, immediately uh, Raab attacked and uh, put in question uh, a number of issues Which were that were 100% uh, agreed, where nobody, uh, even with, uh, there was a reaction of Oli Robbins to Rab and say, but don't do that, this is agreed. So it's clear now that in the British government there is no majority. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's blocked there, but in a serious way. The, um Morning. Morning. Yeah, we have a problem. Yeah. We have a problem because she, 
You see. She, in fact, she refused the backstop. Now, no. she, ac she yeah. accepted the backstop two times in December and in March, clearly by, let by letter, mm -hmm. and she refused to, 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 yeah. to, to put the backstop. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it amounts to. Mm -hmm. That's the result. So, we, we are a key point. In fact, we were ready on Friday, as I said, uh, to, to, to make this agreement, but uh, the, 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 block, the block clearly on the, the backstop. And in fact, for me, there is a strategic and tactic reason also, which is to use Ireland for the, next, for the future negotiations. And to, to, to isolate Ireland, and to, and to not to close this point, and to leave it open for the next two or three years. And in that case, we, we will face clearly uh, 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 permanent pressure on the negotiation for trade, uh, uh, the single market, uh, because of Ireland. This is important. And we have to be, be, be careful about uh, what, what will be the reaction of uh, the European Council and uh, the United States. What is your fear that there is some country then say, OK, Yes. Let it go, this here is Irish issue. Well, you know what the, the danger is? If they, the, the heads of state think that they have to negotiate there. On yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that would be the danger. Mm -hmm. Because that, uh, you have not... She, will, she phones everyone. Everyone. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. One month later, a new attempt is made at finding an agreement on the Irish border backstop. Theresa May has said yes to the plan, but now everyone is waiting for the meeting of her cabinet where her ministers also have to agree. If they say yes, the Brexit negotiations may finally come to a conclusion. Any famous last quotes? This might be the last image I make of you in your office here instead. Get rid of them! <laughs> we kicked them out! <laughs> it's dull. It took us two years. It's dull. But we managed on our terms and conditions. We, 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 finally, <laughs> we finally turned them into a colony. And that was our plan for the first moment. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, there is a statement following a cabinet meeting at Downing Street, but she's not doing it for the moment. In the end, the news only arrives very late at night, while Bram, Edel and Jeroen, the head of media, have dinner together, all ready to launch a first reaction on social media. The cabinet has just had a long, detailed, and impassioned debate. The collective decision of the cabinet was that the government should agree. Here we go, they agree. Yeah. Yeah. The deal that Barnier has reached is 584 pages long. His team needs boxes to carry in copies the next morning. The document legally settles the three divorce issues, including the Irish border backstop. It also agrees on a transition period in which the UK and the EU will further negotiate their future relationship. The main stumbling block, the Irish border backstop, was solved by keeping Northern Ireland and the United Kingdom in a temporary customs union with the EU. In fact, if you look at the national interest and the common interest of both sides, a free trade agreement plus a custom union for the long term will be the best. Finally, there is a deal but it still has to be approved by the UK Parliament, and that is a problem. There is huge resistance to the Irish border backstop. It's meant to be temporary, but it has no end date, and the UK cannot stop it without the consent of the EU. The second Brexit secretary, Dominic Raab, resigns in protest. 
and the pressure may delay the vote in her parliament and offers to go back to Brussels to renegotiate. She's saying, I'm going to do the tour of the European capitals, giving the impression to her party I will renegotiate. I put in the draft speech uh, something like. Uh, ah, here. Mrs. May can do as many tours of the European capitals as she wants. We will never negotiate, renegotiate the current agreement. That's a bit, no? It's too, too aggressive. The year ends and 2019 starts. The day on which the UK will leave the EU, with or without a deal, is creeping closer. The European Union has said no to May's request to renegotiate the Irish border backstop. So when she finally allows the UK Parliament to vote on her deal, she offers nothing new. The voting system in the UK Parliament is that MPs can first shout yes or no, but then have to leave the room to go and vote for real. Voting is finished, you're already there. The eyes to the right, 202. The nose to the left, 432. That's the biggest defeat ever. Really? Yes. Yeah. Well, it is duidelijk that, uh, that there is an uh, yeah, overeenkomst nodig is between the different parties in Great Britain. Eh? It is an, uh, er, is, er is geen meerderheid ja, duidelijk uh, voor uh, deze overeenkomst. En wat nodig is, is een uh, samenwerking tussen de verschillende partijen, de meerderheid en de oppositie, uh, om, uh, om te weten wat zij nu willen. Sorry, kunnen we het in Engels vragen? One more question in Dutch. The deal Theresa May made with the EU looks dead. More than a hundred of her own Tory MPs voted against it. May could try to find an alternative majority with the opposition parties, but she doesn't. Instead, more votes follow on amendments that just express an opinion and have no legal status. The opposition parties vote for one amendment. May's government Tories vote for another, and Verhofstadt gets very irritated. Moet een beetje kwaad worden tegen de Brit, nee? Ja. Van tegen de Britse politieke klasse. Ja, a parliament is not a casino, eh? Yeah. Within 14 days, eh? Again. On a number of amendments, eh? uh, who yeah, will they, they do the same thing. Put, 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 a little bit there, a little bit there, and they will pass with the majority of, of 10, 15, and, and we were, that is our busy with. But I mean, she's right. It's very silly. But it's right, stop now, is this right or not right? You're entering in her game. You're entering in the game of, oh, this amendment, oh, this amendment, ah, will it pass? No, yes, ooh, it passed, ah, 15 names. They, they like it, yeah, it's like a football match. And it's always the same, it's always Manchester City against Manchester United, what we all see, and sometimes Manchester City will win, and sometimes it's Manchester United. But they like it, ah, oh, get one, 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 two, no, no, two, one, ah, get a hop. In the meanwhile, <laughs> but something, of course, does happen. The clock keeps ticking. In 64 days, the UK is leaving the EU, with or without a deal. The time pressure is huge. But maybe that's a conscious tactic. 
There is suspicion that May is using her lack of majority to force the EU to agree to a compromise on the backstop. La stratégie de Theresa May est extrêmement claire. Elle est de nous obliger à céder. Donc ça, c'est l'idée de, de David Davis hein, qui m'a répété à moi plusieurs fois. Euh, de toute façon, au bout de la route, vous faites toujours, vous cédez toujours, vous lâchez toujours. Les Européens lâchent toujours. Bien sûr, le, le, le no deal Brexit serait coûteux pour les 27, mais détruire l'intégrité du marché intérieur encore plus coûteux. Et donc, ne sous-estimez pas le calcul que nous faisons en termes de coûts-bénéfices, si nous devons choisir entre deux mots, nous choisirons le moins euh, coûteux pour nous. Et donc, c'est le no deal Brexit. Ne sous-estimez pas ça. A flurry of diplomatic activity starts, in which all the main players in the Brexit negotiations come to visit the European Parliament. One week later, Theresa May also comes to Brussels with a huge entourage. Her main Brexit aide, Ollie Robbins, and around 50 other advisers. Nothing is achieved. The backstop cannot be changed. But in London, May continues to say that she's negotiating. Do you feel there is a possibility for opening? Or? Uh, Ollie Robbins came to me, uh, can I become Belgium citizen after this whole <laughs> Because I don't think I want it. <laughs> You see them next week. Yes. They're going to use against the meetings with you next week to say about it. There is no need. Mm. Correct. There is no need. We are busy. Because for the moment, this whole thing, and also their visits last week, was, was a joke. Mm -hmm. They had nothing to say. No, nothing. They, have, they have seen everybody of us. The users. The, the, the users. Sure. Sure. To show that, we, that they are busy. To say we have not to vote, to delay again, yeah. because we have no interest in a delay, they have to vote now. So there is not at any level, with them at, at a lower technical level, a preparation of possible text that... No, no, not yet. Not that's, not that's, 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 I'm surprised. No, so I, I don't know, so do you think that, that, that they are just really playing? Because no, no, they, they, they are not playing. First of all, there is many things we don't know between them. It's so, so, so complex, so complex. I think uh, they are not playing game. Huh? They want to, 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 to win game time. I think she, she will try to push everybody as close as possible to the cliffhanger. Huh? So push for everybody already to see the cliffhanger. Yeah. Patience in Europe is wearing thin, and filming becomes more difficult. Late at night, Guy Verhofstadt is summoned to the European Parliament in Strasbourg, where Theresa May has arrived. She wants to make a unilateral declaration about how she believes the Irish border backstop should be interpreted. But Verhofstadt is not impressed. We call it not a unilateral declaration, we call it from now on a shit declaration. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you, you mean the shit declaration? Zie je aan het opnemen? Geen dat zegt. Dan moet je mij wel zeggen in de hoogste okay. okay. uh, dat je aan het, uh, de klank aan het opnemen bent, hè, Loden? Mm -hmm. Everyone is tired. Het is een kamer. Nee, nee, ik heb uw camera wel vuur. Oké, oké. Zie je hoe dat ik nu? Wat? Ah, dat is een protocol. Wat, voilà. Dat is een protocol. Het is een beetje passagier. Het is incroyable dat je het niet weet, hè, Merle? Waar is het nu, Merle? Dit way, dan. Waarom? We zijn niet te laat. We zijn te laat. While Verhofstadt is meeting May, Guillaume receives her unilateral declaration on his mobile. May hopes that it will help her when tomorrow she resubmits her deal with the EU to the UK Parliament for a second vote, two months after it was heavily rejected. 
but Guillaume struggles to understand what May's text actually means. I've read it over twice and I still don't understand it, so they've done a fantastic job. But this is quite uh, It's not understandable. It basically says when it ceases to be temporary, okay. i.e. when it becomes permanent, so if you've used it then it becomes permanent because it's no longer temporary, yes. then the UK, and nobody wants it to be permanent because it's supposed to be temporary, yes. then the situation changes and then therefore in that circumstances things change. That's how I understand it. But where it is in the mind? It's an SMS. Okay. Right. Oh, right. The second vote in the UK Parliament takes place the next day at dinner time. But Frostat is hungry and wants to go to his restaurant. Oh, here we go. Look, here she is. Is, is that me? I don't know. I can't see my Can message. we not go? Fast forward. Can we already yeah. can go? No, 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 yeah, you can see it. Uh, it's like... Come on, come on. 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 Come on, come Order, order. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. The beep, eyes beep. to the right, 242. The nose to the left, 391. Yeah. Theresa May's cliff edge strategy to scare the UK Parliament with a no deal just a fortnight before the departure date did not work. We have seen uh, in, in meetings with uh, her chief of staff from day one, he said, no, 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 we're going to not change our strategy. We're going to deliver in the second vote because we're going to buy some Labour votes. We're going to buy some uh, hard Brexiteers. Uh, he gave, uh, I think it's now more than a month ago, in detail what was the strategy to build up a majority. And if you make the analysis, everything failed. So the question is now, will they change course and will they do what is in fact not natural for them? That's to look to a cross party. Really, in the interest of the Queen, the Crown and the country, do like we are doing. Working together. Defending your interest like we defend our interests so that we can find a way out of this. Nous sommes là au cœur de notre responsabilité politique. C'est pas tous les jours le cas. Dans le travail que nous faisons. C'est notre honneur, si je puis dire, que c'est pour ça qu'il faut être même un peu respectueux du peuple britannique. Il faut penser aux gens du côté du Royaume-Uni qui ont leurs sentiments sur leur, leur propre pays. One week later, an estimated million people marched through London to ask for a second referendum on Brexit. Six million people sign a petition for the UK to remain in the European Union. But for some in the Brexit steering group, the Remainers are as big a problem as the hard Brexiteers. The most problematic group in the House of Commons are the Remainers. And this has to make clear that Remainers are a problem. We have to say it. Please, Remainers, come up also with a compromise. Indirectly, we support them because of our sympathies with them. But in this moment, we have also to explain to him that at least uh, internally, it's time to move for a compromise. Mm -hmm. This is always the majority, as I said before, between the hard Brexit people and the remains. <coughs> and if that coalition is not broken, this negative coalition is not broken, forget everything. <laughs> The divisions over Brexit paralysed the UK Parliament. So eight days before the UK departure date, Theresa May is forced to come to Brussels to ask the European Council of Heads of State and Governments for a delay of the British departure. May gets only a very short delay of a couple of weeks instead of the three months she asked for. <laughs> Que non, 
parce que prolonger la négociation, c'est prolonger l'incertitude. C'est donc les investissements qui ne se font pas. Une longue prolongation, c'est peut-être aussi le risque, si nous ne sommes pas fermes, que les Britanniques en profitent pour dire, eh bien, euh, on pourrait commencer la négociation sur la relation future pendant ce temps. Et là, on se retrouve deux ans en arrière, dans ce grand bargaining que nous avons refusé, que vous avez refusé, avec, grâce au sequencing, on se retrouve dans une discussion où rien n'a été fermé, ni euh, le financial settlement, ni les citoyens, ni l'Irlande, tout est ouvert, et on commencerait une discussion, on commencerait une discussion sur la relation future avec ce grand bargaining que nous avons évité. Euh, ce que j'ai ressenti autour de la table des conseils européens toute l'après-midi de jeudi, le, le dîner du jeudi, c'est que euh, il y a plus qu'une fatigue. Hein. Il y a davantage qu'une fatigue. Hein. Il y a une très grave crise au Royaume-Uni, qui de mon point de vue n'est pas d'ailleurs une crise liée. Euh, D'abord au texte sur le Brexit, ou encore moins euh, au backstop irlandais, qui est une crise beaucoup plus profonde, de type existentiel. Maintenant, le Royaume-Uni doit prendre ses responsabilités. On the scheduled UK departure date, even the energetic Guy Verhofstadt has had enough. This afternoon, Theresa May will have a third try at getting her deal through Parliament. But the Brexit coordinator doesn't even stay to watch anymore. Bye. Bye. Come on up to the Who? And they saw them have all the hooked. I'm going to telephone it. As it now is, we're Monday opnieuw, hè? Well, what do you think they're going to do? Who knows that now? Theresa May also loses her third vote. She comes back to Brussels and is given a longer delay. But according to EU President Tusk, that might not even be the last one. Meanwhile, Guy Verhofstadt keeps having to receive the Brexit steering group in his office. <laughs> Bye-bye. 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 B